And we're back. Uh, so, yeah, I believe uh, we have a mask competition to attend, potentially lose our mask too, and then on top of that, maybe be forced to work in a factory in a horrifying Dickensian way. So, uh, you know, good times. That's a very fun little children's novel. Let's listen to the thing. Heck yes. <laughs> a series of unfortunate um, events here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's really interesting. This is like a very much a sidebar, but it's very interesting to be like jamming this game and going, "Oh, I really don't believe anything that this world is presenting." But I trust you to overcome it. Um, yeah. So I think like uh, we hear Ashik the Cloak give the like roll up, like welcome to the mask making competition. And then everyone's like, yeah. And people like sort of crowd around more. And then I think we see Sunbrook like pushing her way through the crowd. Um, and she's like, her head's like bobbing up over, like, over people and she sees you and she's like, oh, and then books it towards um, the two of you. And I think Faye is probably just so that she doesn't get lost in the whole shenaniganery. She's probably, if, uh, uh, unless Thunderbolt is against this, she's probably, like, riding Thunderbolt just so that, you know, the two of them are not Aww. gonna get separated in the crowd. Also because she's 12 and needs a little bit of extra height to see anything, so. Oh, you're beating Jen. <laughs> Sorry. Nope, still muted. I think it's I think it's muted on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, now you're good. I I think uh, I think it's more like like he's sitting on her shoulders, you know, like then he's riding her. But it's it, it's the same vibe, yeah. Or it's the same thing with a different vibe. I don't know. She's sitting on his idea. shoulders, I assume. Yeah, 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 totally. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think like Sunbrook uh is out of breath when she approaches you, and she's like. I just, I just heard the conditions for this competition, and it's ludicrous. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Like, I can't believe the council would just do that. That seems very unjust. Um, we should destroy this mask. So what? Whoa. No. It's it's the only way that we, you can that all of us can avoid being oppressed by that that factory up there. We just, if we destroy it, then we're out of the competition, and it's not a problem anymore. But it is our problem. I, what, what do you mean? Why are you in this competition? Well, I mean, it was to really stick it to the boss, you know, for stealing all of our designs, but... It sounds like you don't want to do that. I do, but it's, it's not worth one's freedom. Then why would you give it up? <sighs> I don't. Do you, uh, please tell me you have some kind of clever genius plan to both win this competition and also avoid the stipulations on which we must abide. Thunderbolt, are you going to tell her? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we're gonna we're, we're gonna run run like hell. Is, is our basic gist of our plan? I think Faye just looks at her like this is the most sensible thing she's ever heard, and she'll go, "We're very good at running." <laughs> and I think Sunbrook like um uh she hears this and says well, should should I run too? Sunbrook did you agree to the, the conditions? Did you do you wanna work in that factory? Oh, of course not. I mean, having those resources would be amazing, but not under those conditions. It's... So don't. It's not right. They can't make you do it. Even if the council says that it's mandatory? Just because people say things doesn't mean that they're true. Opinions can be wrong, and that is an opinion. You did not sign anything or agree to anything. <sighs> I've been, I'm very scared at the prospect of going in and... Putting it all on the line like that. You you have two choices, or well, actually, you have three choices. One, 
you can listen to something that makes no sense to you and do something that's only going to hurt you. Two, you can win this competition, prove to everyone that you're the better mask maker, and in return, provide masks for people with a fair uh, exchange rate and just ignore anything that they tell you because they're clearly liars and terrible people. Or three, maybe you can get everyone to understand that the factory is an awful place and what they're doing is terribly unjust, and if everybody agrees that they're not going to work with them, then... What, what did you say about means of production, Thunderbolt? <laughs> uh, the, the workers need to control it. <laughs> yeah, you should control the means of production. And um, I think like that's when, I think Ruby's like being around, she's like the science sister that we saw mm -hmm. in a couple of episodes prior, um, who was being a bit bullied <laughs> by her older uh, twin sister. Um, and Rose, I think like, pushes her glasses for the, the bridge of her nose as her Ruby does that and says, um, I don't want to say anything because there's a lot going on and it still sounds very scary, but I think I'd be okay at running that factory. Well, well I don't own the, I don't own the factory. It's not, I don't know how we get it for you. You're probably right though. What if, what if what if we took down the boss and made him go away, and then I could work with all these automata to make something useful, or I don't know, maybe let them. F I'm, I don't, I'm just spitballing here, but I think I'd be good at it. How exactly do you think we take down the boss, though? <sighs> I think that Ruby looks to Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt took care of her sister by pooping in her bed. <laughs> We're pretty good at running. I don't know how good we are at taking down bosses. Bima did kill the wolf, though. And by kill, I mean strip it of its power and return it to its father. But, you know, close enough. And and, and Thunderbolt took care of my sister, and she's, so scary. she's scarier than that boss, I'm gonna be honest. Do you have ideas, Chud? Oh. No, I'm not sure where to go. And then I, th I think, like, if, um... Well, let's think about it for a hot minute. Oh, yeah. First, we gotta win a competition, hmm? There are several steps, yes. This is a... This is a clock. <laughs> Contest first, boss second, maybe running. Sounds, Sounds good. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Um, and yeah, so we hear like Arturo, uh, sorry, Archduke Pekok's voice over the loudspeaker again. So like, it's time. Uh, please welcome to the stage our majestic boss of the, these lands, the boss himself, Mr. Boss. And <laughs> um I, yeah, I, I think, like, we see that very tall figure approach the stage, and I think they have a very military silhouette. Um, I think they have, like, a wide-brimmed hat on that kind of obscures their features a bit, but I think you can see, like, a curl of um, <clears throat> smoke uh, coming out from, like, where their mouth should be. <clears throat> they don't say anything. Um, and Archduke Pekok says, ah, oh, and of course we have, uh, our very own Sunbrook of the Bazaar Bazaar, who is being represented by the one and only Faye. Faye, are you here? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'll stand up. Oh, God, my, like, sort of gestures for Faye to get up on, on stage. I, th I think Faye just stands up and waves to everyone from the back of Thunderbolt. Nice. Nice. And they and they sort of, uh, I think he says like, and now a drum roll, please, for our mass. And you can hear like a drum beat from like the oh the band that we're like sort of playing music they're probably dancing to earlier. Um, and he says, and we have this delightful entry from the boss himself, and like sort of pulls off a cloth and ooh, I. 
And I think it's... It's quite a play mask, but it's executed with meticulous detail and precision. And it has, like, this very... Um, broad smile across its face. I think it is kind of, it has like um, olive greens and browns. And it's got very earthy uh, tones and textures. Um, and I think, let's look at the playbook for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's I think this is like the features that stand out the most about this mask. And then Atur and then Ashik Fakok says, and of course the magnificent Sunbrook and her protege Faye sort of takes the cloth off and it's like that beautiful like um sea themed, treasure themed uh mask with the shells and like ocean detail. Um everyone's like, ooh, and like sort of claps <laughs> and then sort of like, ah, oh, like gossip or and like wonder. Um, and actually the coke says, and of course it is up to myself. I have been humbly asked to judge this competition. And uh, I of course took into consideration things like uh, artistic appreciation, resemblance to my dear self uh, in these masks for I am a, quite the figurehead of the bazaar bazaar, I'm sure you'd all agree. And of course, innovation and creativity. And after hours and hours of deliberation, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I can safely say that our dear Sunbrook has won this like mass competition. It was like, yay. Um, and the, the boss like doesn't move at all. Uh, but, oh, but I do think we see um, Ape in the crowd with like uh I think like she's had um a hair upgrade where like this pot's like buzz cut shaved off kind of thing and like she's wearing a mishmash of like different fabrics. You can kind of see some of Sunbrook's fabrics in there and she's like going nuts in the crowd along with like her uh mechanical companion that likewise has I think she has like sort of very like um show up cropped hair like Bay does and they're all they're going wild and um Ashik Bakok says <laughs> yes 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 congratulations of course are very well owed to our dear Faye Sunbrook um and with that prize oh with that title of course comes the prize of being an intern at the factory up the hill <laughs> Where you work Congratulations for all around. <laughs> Thank you, but we will not be taking that prize. And then I take my mask back. <laughs> and you can hear the crowd going, like, oh, like, what? what is it? And uh, Shippa Cook's like, <clears throat> I, I don't think you heard me. Uh, the title comes with the prize of being an intern for the factory. And it is yeah, yeah, we're still not taking it. But this is the best mask! Yeah! <laughs> and I think Ashik the Coke is like, oh, I, 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 mediator? I call for the mediator. Ooh. Oh, 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 it's on. Let's do this. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I know this drill. I think the mediator, like, um, appears out of thin air. It's like there's, uh, coal, like this coalescing particles and smoke of like navy i think they're, they're navy blue i think those were the colors last time if not they're navy blue now <laughs> and then like they sort of twists and spins like ribbons or fabric in the air and that sort of like ripples out to like be the mediator and their intimidating size with like that flat mask on and they say uh i have been summoned to adjudicate a matter and i stupid coke was like yes they're trying to break the agreement that uh, the council came to for this, the, the regulations of this competition. And the mediator, I think, looks to like Faye and Thunderbolt and- We didn't they... agree to anything, so we don't have to do the thing. <sighs> the mediator says, dear 
little mediator. I... This sounds very strange coming from yourself. Why is that? Well... I find myself somewhat bound by the letter of the law, and that the council who oversees the Bizarre agreed these would be the conditions of such a competition. Don't you think that it is appropriate that if you attempt to inflict conditions upon myself that I should agree to it as well? Or is that not part of the laws of the Bizarre Bizarre? And Ashdip the Coke was like, oh, no one needs to worry about their individual needs. We, we know well enough to speak for everyone. Clearly you don't know well enough to speak for me. Why? And, uh, you know, uh, that kind of fine print legalese is going to really bite people in the behind in the Bizarre Bizarre in the long run. Um, not even to mention that unpaid or low paid internships are a way to keep uh, job experience in the hands of only the most privileged people. Uh, but that, that's, that's, that might be a whole other issue. I think the, the media looks to like Thunderbolt. I, I think guess I best... actually, I think oh, yeah. Faye crosses her hands and looks at the mediator very carefully. And I'm about to, to do some fun, fancy things with my beliefs here. But I think what Faye says is if I refuse to agree to this, does that not mean that the people that agreed to this have failed in their capacity to understand that they know what is best for us? So by that definition, they perhaps should not be in the roles that are granted to them. And she, like, looks right at Archduke Pakok, and she says, I wonder which one of you was so critically wrong. Is it you or the head of the factory? Oh, dang. <laughs> Footstop! <laughs> that is very good. Is it standing strong under your convictions? Uh... <laughs> your... I I, I I don't know if I'm doing that or breaking a conviction. We have to check. There Let is a manner that says, look. there is a, young ladies must put others' needs before their own, <laughs> which sounds like uh, you could be breaking that manner right now. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Um, <laughs> my, my, my darlingest piggy friend, uh, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you believe? Do you believe that, like, like... I feel like we need either a law about like self autonomy or, um, maybe a, maybe a law about like others not having good uh good goals for you. Like I don't know. What what, what are you feeling here, Judd? Uh, it is the correct thing that we are breaking. I I don't uh I don't one hundred percent know what the new belief is. So, uh, if you would. Well, actually, we have to roll first before we see if we can cross it out. Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you'll get to cross it up either way. It's just more... Um, and What's... you'll get to roll it right up either way, but the, the roll will determine, like, sort of just the... So I believe it's a, it's a straight roll first up, right? It is, yeah. All right, let's try this. Here we go. Uh, roll 2d6. Boop. That did not end well. Judd, help! Ooh, a five. Yeah, so Thunderbolt, you can help by okay. uh, offering guidance and advice, <laughs> which is, is your, we're also in your forte of unionizing and uh, speaking truth to power. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, would, do you have a thing you can say to give Faith some advice and confidence in overcoming this manner? Yeah, he's like, you know, we don't do laws because we're they're right. We do laws because they're just. Like, you don't just follow the law because it's the law. That's ridiculous. That's why it's called justice. And actually, Faye says, Mediator, you told me that your mask was made by Sunbrook. That is why I went to talk to her. Which tells me that you are not just a mask. You're a person under the mask. And one of the purposes of the law is to think about like, the reason that we have a mediator as a person and not just a set of laws that are executed by Robots. I'm so sorry. I, I think you're people. I, I say to the to the uh, automata, and I turn back, and I'm like, is because sometimes 
justice also requires judgment. And in that case, it requires a judgment call. So do you feel like you should be ruled by inflexible laws that take absolutely no one's will into account? Or do you believe that this is a case where you might act in the best interests of the bazaar and the people in it? Oh, heck yeah. I feel like we can, we can roll that into the... A, uh... I feel like that was so good. I'm not going to make Thunderbolt roll. <laughs> so yeah, please feel free to go ahead and roll Refuse to Mind Your Man. Is... Ha! Um, no! No dice! <laughs> oh, no! Sometimes it happens. It's okay. okay. So how does so how does this work? I don't actually know this move failing very often. Yeah, heck yeah. So either way, you get to write a belief. So you'll still get to write a belief and cross off that manner. Um on a six minus, uh, how what part is what part of your rebellion is misunderstood by others? So this is a, a girl facing move. So you, you get to sort of set that parameter of like, how far does my word go? Like, do I infect other people around me? Do I start a riot? Like, do I do the powers that be? I have um, a feeling that this understand? definitely does something very misinterpretable by the. Uh, the automata. <laughs> I, oh, I don't one hundred percent know how well that ends. Is it you? Ah, oh, yes, you're the cross out. Um, cool. So, Judd, let's talk about this. What do we What do we write as a belief here? Uh, hmm. is it just rules have to be? So the belief the that we are be... the belief that we are nixing, just so that you know, yeah. is young ladies must put others' needs before their own. And I oh, think wow. I think the thing that we are talking about here is <sighs> Yeah, like I it for sure evokes a sense of having meaning and a voice like within a system or like um that's kind of what I was getting from it. <laughs> young young ladies have to. Uh, we don't have to couch it in up. that term. One of the things okay. that we yeah. Could, yeah one one of the things that we could say is something like the only laws worth following are just ones or like yeah. the ones that consider everyone. Yeah. Um, That's what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I I thought I thought we had to frame it as as the old one was. Okay. Ah oh, yes. No. Yeah. You can write whatever the whatever you like. <laughs> Take that! Heck yeah. Um, awesome. And, and yes, you said the so the automata, they, they have a reaction to what to this message that you're putting out there to like the counts, to the mediator. Yeah, I, f I feel like, like uh, well, the, the, the question of course here is uh, what part of your rebellion is misunderstood by others? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it it could be that 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 folks hear something in the message that maybe isn't there um oh cool uh but but i, I don't know uh what do you folks think i i dig it um i think uh the automata like they get they get loud and they, they their voice joins yours um and you can hear them parroting back like stuff that thunderbolt was saying about unions and like having a voice as a worker and that um corporations should respond to like the people that are a part of like the part of it and that kind of thing we're the, we're the most important part of it without us you wouldn't have a factory um and i think like Afe clambers her way up on stage while everyone's like what the hell is happening and like uh um and she we see her face the boss and while she looks him dead in the eye, she grabs the mask from him and then just like breaks it. Everyone like goes, <gasps> there's like a really still silence. And the boss doesn't say anything, but you can feel that heat like radiating off of him of like anger that he's like belly, belly containing in. And looks at him and says you 
tell us things like you're taking care of us and that if we follow what you say things will be fine and good and that we owe an obligation to you for making us and creating us and that we should feel valued and like we have meaning because you made us but you know what I had a break for the first time in my existence. Oh shit. And it felt good. And the boss is like, I think he whips around. He knows exactly like <laughs> who Ape has been talking to. And he, his voice takes on like a much grander presence. Like there's three or four from talking at once. And he says, you would dare come into this settlement and challenge everything that I've worked hard for, everything that I've given you, everything that I've done to bring prosperity and order to this place, and you break it. I think it's time that I, oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I think uh, Thunderbolt says, or another way to look at it is that you worked hard to make something and she's improving on it. I mean, you don't have to be such a dick. But I think, like, the the boss, like... I think Faye, oh. Faye actually speaks up. Mm. I think what she says is, like, you worked very hard to make prosperity... But how much worth is prosperity if nobody is happy? <clears throat> and I, I think um, the boss lets out this howl. <clears throat> it's as similar to like the howl that you heard in the dark woods when you took down the the wolf of the wolfwood, and everything in the bazaar sort of like cascades into darkness and blackness um and through the dimness you can make out the boss as with that howl he similarly turns into ravens and crows oh um, shit and from around you you can hear each of them talking at you from every angle. And they're saying things like, there is a price for prosperity and there's a, there is a price that one must pay for privileges, privileges that I've given you. And I think these are like things that you'd like, remember your military dad like telling you about whenever oh, you totally. like stood up to him. 100, all right. <laughs> um, and it's things like, you should be, you should be, thankful and lucky and proud that you've had this opportunity and what do you do with that opportunity you spit in my face and you disrespect me when all i've ever done for you is care for you and love you and make you who you are and this is what you do Yeah, I, I think like Thunderbolt looks to Faye to respond to that. Oh, oh, oh! Thanks, Judd. <laughs> Good job. Uh, I mean, he will. He, he will. He, he will uh, respond. If you want me to? Um, no, no, says, no. I, 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 I mean, I, I, I'm having trouble because I know Strash is not a 12 year old girl. Uh, <laughs> so I'm having a lot of trouble separating what an adult with far more life experience and understanding about relationships might say to something like this, uh, versus what a 12 year old that tried very, very hard to be super brave, uh, but is faced with one of her deepest fears is, is probably experiencing here because I have a feeling that Faye's response to this would be to like cry out and cover her ears and like huddle into a small ball. Uh, but like there is this part of me that wants to say, very reasonable things that are not lessons that you learn until much later in love or in, in life like that, you know, 
punishment and order are no substitutes for love. That buying me things is not a demonstration of of uh, that that uh, it's 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 not a demonstration of caring. It is a demonstration of ownership. You buy things you own, and I do not owe you anything. But that's not a thing that a twelve year old will be able to pull out of her ass. <laughs> So. I mean, I, I I like the idea of combining those two, and you just like cover your ears and and scream like I don't owe you anything. Yeah, that sounds That's good. Very good. Yeah, that is super good. Does it feel like a Does it feel like a stand strong in your convictions kind of like scream back at? Yeah, I I feel like it is. I think I think Faye yeah Faye Faye actually like you know takes a second to like feel the warmth of Thunderbolt and the, the, the fur and realize that, you know, she's not alone. She's got, like, a friend. And then she says, my name is Faye, and you have done nothing for me. You are a monster, and I'm not scared of you. So, uh... So let's, uh, let's roll some dice. Let's, let, uh, actually, let's take a, like, let's take a hot second to look at our beliefs first. Uh... Yes. So we have not shown your feelings is the same as long. I feel like you're definitely showing your feelings. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Do what's right and what you're told. Definitely applies. Um, sometimes the wrong action is better than no action. It feels like that I don't know if that one's in, but... No, yeah, that one is in. Standing up to, to, to people and breaking rules is definitely the wrong action. Let's do it. Plus, and I then, feel like from Faye's from perspective, it feels like the wrong action because, like, she, this is the best time she's done this. Like, I, I think the important ones here are actually the last ones, right? The only mm -hmm. rules worth following are ones that consider everyone. Clearly, this does not. Because it definitely considers the adult with power in the situation, the person, you know, driven by prosperity as opposed to, like, the person who's the kid here. And totally. obviously, goddamn, are some opinions <laughs> just wrong. So, yes. that that is that is the number one belief there, please. <laughs> so. So that sounds like at least, is that like one, two... Oh. Like four-ish, I want to say. Five. I think it's like five, it's yeah, five. four or five. five. Yikes. Plus ones. I think you got 66. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 get this done. Plocks, please, dice. Like Do not roll a one here. Build some crits into this game. <laughs> and it's keep two, right? Top two? Yeah, that's a crit. That's, that's as high as you can get. 12. All so. right. There are sixes. Um, there are sixes. Yes, good. There are sixes. <laughs> there are sixes in this game. Let's go. So it says... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yes. And it's even plus. How do you overcome the challenge? So, like, how does... Yeah, like, what... What happens when Faye screams out, I don't owe you anything to, like, this void of uh, ravens and crows that has consumed the bizarre area? I have a very cinematic answer. I don't know. Oh, cool! Yeah. How how you how you feel about this? It, it's it's a little bit maybe uh, metaphoric. Uh, so bear with me, and it's kind of magical, perhaps. Do uh, it. Yeah. Which is that I think that when she yells, the feathers fall off of the 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 crows that are flittering around her, and all mm. they can do is clack their beaks, right? So like they just make a chattering noise, and then. As they sort of separate, the only thing that falls to the ground is uh, maybe like a metal mask, where instead of like feathers that come out, it's pipes, and it just produces belching smoke in that horrific like multiple voice metallic noise that uh, you know the 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 foreman was yelling in, and then it probably like the fires in its eyes die down and the smoke changes from black to white. So that's so cool, and I think like the. Yeah, that's that's super rad. I think the void like recedes as that happens, and like all the color comes back to like the bizarre, more saturated than it was before. I think, um, like the fabrics on Sunbrook look brighter. Um, the neon color that Afe put in her hair, it's like radiant, and um, everyone kind of like blinks and like looks around, and everyone's like very quiet as they take in what just happened. And you notice that, like, the boss is, is gone. Um, their presence, like, isn't in the air anymore. You can't smell pipe smoke anymore. That um, peppermint is also gone. And I think Sunbrook, like, takes up that metal mask. And then, ooh. 
I think like we get that sort of like whispering stuff to the rest of the crowd as they're like, oh, the, like the boss is gone. The boss is gone. The boss is gone. <laughs> and the mediator, um, I think, swings a, their mask like down towards uh, Faye and Thunderbolt. And they say, well, uh, I, it appears to me that the conditions upon this agreement have uh, changed since it was initially uh, agreed by the council. I think and Faye puts her glasses back on, on for whatever reason in my head. She has like big round glasses, right? Uh, and I think she like pushes them up on her nose and looks at the mediator and it goes, you don't say. <laughs> And I think the, the mediator, I think the Nash Duke Bacolk is like, I think grabs like the mediator's arm and is very like, no, but it was agreed. We, we must follow through with the with the, the words in this agreement. And the mediator, I think like brushes them off and is like, mm, no, I, I think, I think, uh, no, I, I, I know based on the regulations we have in place in this area that this agreement is now null. We should search for the boss to see if the factory is still running, but I'm not quite sure what to do if uh, I suppose we just condemn the site if there is no one there to respond to it. You don't have to so. condemn it. Everybody that works there is still around. All you need is a new boss. And I think that that Faye'll wander over and and uh, reach for the mask that Sunbrook is holding, the the brass mask with the the pipes and everything. Uh, oh, cool! Yeah, and, totally. I think Sunbrook yeah, and, will like give it to Faye. Yeah, and I think that that if she gets it, she just there. There's like a montage where like the camera's looking at her back as she's like working on a mask, and then when she turns it around, like all the pipes are like braided into hair or whatever. And she says, like, you can just pick a new boss. And she just holds the mask out to uh, to, to Ruby and says, like, you have to hold, you know, like, a proper vote with the, with Aeth and the rest of them. They really need a name. <laughs> um, I think, like, Ruby takes the mask. And you get to see that, like, when she put that idea out there, she really wasn't expecting it to come to fruition. And, like, everyone was like, I don't know if we can do that. She's like, she like, kind of written it off. Um, but she takes the mask and you see her like eyes light up behind her glasses. Um, I think, I think that, that Faye puts a hand on her shoulder and says, you're going to screw up, but if you keep at it, you're going to get better every time. Aww. Aww. <laughs> that is so sweet. Um, I think like Gia, I think like, um, like sort of swells over to her sister Ruby, I'm um, like we hear like the pages like flutter, and she like puts her arms around her sister and says like I guess this is goodbye then. And Ruby's like, oh you're not hanging around with me to help me with the factory. And Gia's like, no, of course not. <laughs> I got so much to see. There's like libraries I haven't been to yet. And Ruby's like, but I don't know if I can do it like without your support. And she's like. <sighs> like puts her hands on like her sister's shoulders and says you'll be fine like face it you're gonna screw up but you have people like Sunbrook here to help you and she's great um, and you can always talk to the factory workers remember they are the ones that are running the factory they probably know some things yeah and you should also give them names I feel like that's a very important thing you should do Ruby is give them names and breaks don't give them names help them find their names Yes, you're right. Help them find their names. And you'll be you'll be fine. And Ruby's like, I think she gets a bit teary and she like tries really hard not to like tear up, but she has to like sort of lift her glasses up and sort of wipes a tear away. And she's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss you, Gia. And Gia's like, ah, I'll miss you too. But we'll see each other again. And I look forward to coming back when you're this like big badass like boss person, but not a mean boss like that one, but like a good boss who respects and recognizes unions. <laughs> um, and then I think Gia, like, with that, like, turns around to, like, the group there and is like, well, where are we going now? <laughs> uh, 
uh, I actually kind of have an idea, but Judd, uh, do you have thoughts? Uh, I think when, when Thunderbolt sees, uh, sees Faye quote him and, and like empower other people with things that he's taught, he like, <laughs> takes a hoof to his own ears, to his own eyes rather. And, uh, he's still sniffling a little and he's like, that was way better than running so yeah. much better. <laughs> Empowering workers is so much better than running. Uh, <laughs> This book is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right. What 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 are you thinking, Faye? I think that all the troubles in this land seem to come from one place, so it might be time to go to that place. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried you would say that. All right, let's do it. She puts one one hand gently on Pat's Thunderbolt side as they're walking out of the bazaar, and she says, "Well, Thunderbolt, if you're worried I'm going to say something, then you have to have different ideas." <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think you're saying what I might not be brave enough to say. So, yeah, it's time to confront him. All righty then. I think uh, I think we're, I know where we're going next. Yay! <laughs> so so do we do we just wrap it there and then have a a, a big confrontation with the the crow king next time or? Yeah, I think this feels good to wrap here. I have, there, there may be some other stuff that pops up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I yeah. think that there I'm... may be one or two more sessions left. If sure, sounds good. Awesome. Folks are keen, but we can at least chat about that. But yeah, it feels like. Do you have more stuff gonna... prepped, Lauren? I, I know you mentioned oh. you did. A bunch of yeah. homework, so. uh, oh, I do a lot of homework, but I feel like this is a good time to like, like, I feel like we faced a mini boss and had our very sweet like uh, debrief afterwards. So this feels like a good time to, to okay. wrap. And then the homework that I did prep, I can just roll into next session. That sounds great. That sounds <laughs> yeah. great. All right. Awesome. Uh, cool. So, so, uh, I guess this is the point. There's no end of session. <laughs> There's no end of session. I know it gets me every time, right? Like I, I'm like, all right, so are we doing XP? No, wait, there's no XP. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, so I guess, uh, at that point we just do outro. So, um, hey, uh, I've been Strash Yeeham. I'm one of the regular streamers here on actual play. Um, you can catch me on Twitter at Strash A. Uh, it should be under my doobly doo here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, check, actually, uh, check me and Lauren out tomorrow morning. We're doing some scum and villainy, and then I believe all three of us are going to be back Monday night, maybe, uh, for, for some, some Project Perseus. So, very, very long weekend. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, if you, uh, if you've enjoyed this, uh, I'm sure Lauren will, actually, I'll let Lauren tell you where to get the game. But, uh, yeah, if you, if you enjoyed us playing, uh, there's going to be more of us on this channel coming up. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early, and then, uh, t well, th I guess it depends on your time zone, <laughs> and then uh, Monday evening. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's stuff that I'm excited about. So I'm gonna pass it away. Lauren, tell us about yourself in this lovely game. Yes. So I guess I've been Lauren. I use she they. I am at the Stray Kiwi on Twitter and thestraykiwi.com if you want to learn more about myself. Um, I co-wrote this game with JC Ross. Uh, it is, if you missed the start, it's Alice in Wonderland, PBTA, Wizard of Oz, like, hijinks for you. Take down the patriarchy. <laughs> and in some cases, confront uh, capitalism <laughs> and oppression. Um, you can find it at girlunderground.org is the page that'll take you to all the places you can buy it if you would like to check it out. Um, and yeah, otherwise I am just very excited to play more sad robots <laughs> for tomorrow's coming villainy. I am playing a robot that is facing mortality for the first time. Um, so I'm very, I've been thinking about various directions to take that plot and I'm excited for all of them. And then yes, I'm playing a very sassy, uh, demigod daughter <laughs> in Project Perseus on Monday with cool ice powers who has a lot of great uh, spy one-liners. So I'm hoping I can keep it that straight. But I'm, I'm rambling now. Judd, please save me. <laughs> uh, I am Judd, he, him. Uh, I do a podcast called Daydreaming About Dragons and uh, should be easy for you to find out there. If you're watching Twitch, I'm pretty sure you're savvy enough to, to find it. If not, you can go to my uh, 
Twitter, which is in the do under the doobly doo, and uh, that's about it. It's nice to nice to that was that was fun. I'm glad. <laughs> All right, then, I guess this is the point where we go smooth outro. Yeah. Thank you for watching.